Hello and welcome to this third lecture in software engineering, an overview course. And uh, in this lecture, I'm going to talk about UML, continue to talk about UML uh, on the runtime modeling. So I've already covered use case diagrams, activity diagrams, use case descriptions and storyboards. And uh, now I'm going to cover class diagrams briefly uh, and sequence diagrams, state charts. So this is uh, so class diagrams models the static structure of the system, while sequence diagrams and state chart diagrams uh, model the dynamic behavior. And I'll explain when to use and how to use these. The first, I'm going to just sum up um, the talk about use cases with a CVR table, cost, value, risk, and this is how you prioritize um, your work, um, when to develop certain things, etc. So this is um, a table you can use. Um, you can modify this, of course, and I know people use this quite differently. Some people uh, multiply cost by value by risk, and, and other people have other types of formulas. The important thing is that you get a number on which you can prioritize it. So basically, the things you want to develop first, the use cases you want to develop first, are the ones that cost the least, that has the highest value, and the lowest risk. So those are the ones you want to be developing first. Now, there might be dependencies. So for instance, uh, use case number 15 here depend on 14, five, 11, and five. So in case we decide to develop number 15 and neither 14, 11, and five have been developed yet, we need to develop those first. So in this case, we just multiply these factors together. And uh, you might not, may notice that we have swapped the uh, um, scale around on value. So a low value is a low number is a high value and a high number is a low value. And that is so we can multiply it. But you can, of course, use division instead if you are more comfortable with doing that. So basically, in this case, we assign a number. So cost, we, we can... Uh, say that in scale 1 to 10 uh, we estimate it to be cost 2 compared to the other uh, use cases that we are using um, for value um, creating a report might be quite important so we say give that a low number uh, number 2 and uh, quite a high risk because we haven't developed it yet we don't know exactly maybe how to do this and then we list the dependencies so we calculate this and uh, come up with a development order. Um, in this case, the lowest number is the one we develop first. Uh, so number 15 first, then number 20, uh, etc. Now, if we do have some dependencies that need to be developed first, those will, of course, be bumped up in the order. So this is a cost value risk table. It's very useful to develop these when you have uh, created your use cases in order to prioritize when to develop certain features and also to create uh, modules and, and to create different phases or, or uh, milestones uh, for your development project. So you, you uh, basically find when in which order certain things should be developed and when you can have a user look at certain things. Okay, so continuing to uh, use cases and to uh, model it we use uml and the dynamic behavior so we just remember this use case for purchasing a ticket and this is the use case description uh, where we can select zones display an amount due uh, insert money get money uh, get the change and then get the ticket now if we were to use this in a sequence diagram uh, we would basically say um, when certain things are happening um, just to show you a few different things here. Um, so we have an actor, the passenger. We have, the passenger has a lifeline and that's the uh, vertical column. That is when the passenger is active. We have an object called a ticket machine and that also has a lifeline. So we select a zone uh, It's active for a while. We insert coins, it's active for a while. Pick up change, it's active for a while. Pick up ticket, it's active for a while. So uh, this is a very simple um, sequence diagram. 
Uh, we have arrow, arrows with messages, and those are typically function calls. They could be um, pseudo code, or they could be actual codes with actual function calls with, and you can have returns, etc. As well, dashed lines are typically returns, like what you're expecting in return. Uh, looking at more of a nested message. Uh, you uh, on the same example we can select the zone in the zone checkbox that one in turn looks up the price and he can see that we use uh, selection as a, a parameter for this call in the tariff schedule uh, as a return you can see the data flow and the dashed line and that's the price and then you display this to the passenger uh, on the display display price um, Sequence diagrams, uh, they illustrate the runtime view and are quite helpful to illustrate the communication between different objects and classes and instances and modules. So if you have a complex communication flow, um, many things communicate with each other, then a sequence diagram might be the di diagram you need to um, illustrate or to, to get a good overview. Uh, and this also complements class diagrams, and class diagrams uh, are the compile time view, so how things are structured together. Um, they might be complicated, complex to build these, but they, I mean, in certain cases, they are quite valuable actually. Um, so this is just another example. If you remember the the watch, um, and here is you can um, how you actually set the hours, etc. So um, you have a watch user, you have uh, instances, simple watch, LCD display and a time. In order to, if you want to set the hours, you press button one once and you then the hours blink. If you press it again, the minutes blink. And you press button two, you increment minutes, uh, it refreshes the display. And you press one and two together, then you commit the time. So basically this, this sequence diagram illustrates the use case of changing the minutes on your clock or on your watch. So you have the object, you have the messages, you have the activation line, the, so the lifeline the activation line. There are uh, quite a few additions to sequence diagrams. So sequence diagrams in the original format is a little bit limited, but people have come up with some modifications. So you have conditional cases, which is an alt box. You can see it in the example there. Uh, you have options, you have things that should run in parallels, you have loops, etc., uh, regions, and, um, and so on. So you can, you can find some of these examples online uh, to look them up. And um, you can also make up your own. Uh, the important thing is that people understand what you, are want, what you want to communicate with your sequence diagram. Now going on to state chart diagrams. So basically a state chart diagrams illustrate what the states, so what, what states the software can be in and what states you can reach from those. Uh, so in this case, going to the example of uh, being able to set the time on a watch again. And now this illustrates all of the states. If you look at the sequence diagram we just showed, that illustrates one use case, and this actually illustrates all of the possibilities of the state of the software. So here you can see, if you want to increment hours, you press button two. Uh, so basically, actually, there should be a line uh, on the vertical lines. You should be press button one uh, in the first one, in the first instance. Uh, you uh, go from if you press button one, you go from blink hours to blink minutes, and then again you can increment minutes, or you can press button one and two to stop blink and, and commit the time, um, etc. You can do the same with seconds. Um, I know that some people have problems understanding what the software state is, and it's easy to confuse with activity diagrams because they are so similar in the how they look. But imagine where a software where it's basically paused. You can actually make our uh, make arrows, which just goes from a state back to the same state with an, with some description on what's happening. If something is happening automatically, you just return to the same state. 
And that could be maybe if you are saving something to disk, you might want to illustrate that and then you can make that arrow going back to the same state. Otherwise, typically I would say a state is somewhere where, where a software is paused to um, receive some input from the user or some form of input from another system or something like that. So you have the initial state, which is a filled box, a uh, filled circle. Final stage with the filled circle with an empty circle around it. You have the states, you have the events, and the transition lines. So to sum up with the UML diagram, so they provide quite a variety of different notations. Now I've just gone through a few. There are a few more. Uh, keep it simple. That's very important. Don't overdo it. Don't add too many diagrams because that becomes too complex. Some some use cases should never be done into use case diagrams like logging in uh, for the, typically login boxes, etc. People know what they look like and, and so on. So you don't need to to explain them further. Um, and we can model the compile time view and we can model the runtime view and we can model the way the users interact with this functionality in the system. So UML is a nice methodology. It's not, don't, don't get limited with the standard. Uh, if you feel that it's too limiting, you can make up your own notations as well, uh, as long as it's possible for people to understand what you mean. So thank you for that. And hopefully you will continue listening to these lectures. Thank you.